weekly meeting of the Community Development Committee to order. A physical quorum of members is not present. However, pursuant to Section 7E of the Open Meetings Act, members are permitted to attend remotely. Either one member of the committee, the chief administrative officer, or our chief legal counsel are physically present at the regular meeting location. In-person attendance and public comments are allowed subject to attendance limitations required to ensure the health and safety of those who attend. That said, I will call the meeting to order. Can we call the roll, please? First, I'm going to apologize for mispronouncing anybody's name. Okay, Consuelo Arguelas of Villa Park. Kurt Barrett with Winfield. Don Bashian with Carol Stream. Here. Karen Briggs with Roselle. Here. Liz Chaplin, District 2. Here. Lori Chaffee with West Chicago. Here. Amy Chavez, District 5. Here. Sadia Colbert, District 5. Michael Crandall Addison. Here. Dawn Desart, District 5. Here. Peter DeCiani, District 2. Natalia Domobisova with Warrenville. Mahalia Dragoon with Oak Brook Terrace. Grant Eckhoff, District 4. Eileen Franz with Elmhurst. Here. Mark Franz with Glen Ellen. Paula Deacon Garcia, District 2. Here. Kathleen Gargano, Hinsdale. Sean <laughs> Gascoigne, Bloomingdale. Don, Dan Gombeck, Darien. Rubra Govind, Hanover Park. Yes. Roberta Grill, Bartlett. Greg Hart, District 3. William Hennis, Lombard. Here. Tracy Jones with Wheaton. Here. Joanne Kalkbrenner with Glendale Heights. Here. Brian Krajewski with District 3. Lynn LaPlante, District 4. Here. Shannon Malik Narsmuth with Itasca. Mary Ozog, District 4. Here. Brian Papp with Willowbrook. Kalisha Page with Woodridge. Here. Bosha Pacheha with Wooddale. Here. Dan Popovich with Downers Grove. Here. Donald Pachowski, District 1. Julie Renahan, District 3. Here. Sheila Rutledge, District 6. Here. Greg Schwarzy, District 6. Here. Ashley Selman, District 1. Here. Michael Satana, Lyle. Bruce Sylvester with Westmont. I'm here. Sam Tornatori, District 1. Daniel Ungleider with Clarendon Hills. Scott Biger with Bensonville. Mm -hmm. Evan Walter with Burr Ridge. James A, District 6. Okay, we have a quorum. Thank you. Hi, May I ask a procedural question of the state's attorney? Given that we have 22 people on the call and everything has to be a roll call vote, would it be appropriate or possible to move to combine one motion to combine all of the action items, then discuss them one at a time, and then one vote to, to approve all of the action items so that we're only taking two roll calls instead of six, what, five or six? Um, are they all basically based on the same funding? They are all, well, they are all related to either community development block grant or home affordable partnership uh, funding. So they're all, Funding they will um, well B five B C and D would all go to the 
County Board. The minutes, I believe, would go to the County Board. The action item 5A was not. I'm just trying to yeah, no, think I, if there's a way to. I, I understand. I think I would, I would keep it separate for now. I think it's just best. Okay. And okay. I thought, I'm going to apologize. I cannot understand what the state's attorney just said. Her audio is garbled on my end. So someone will have to tell me what the direction was. My direction was to keep it separate. Okay. Thank, thank you. But Mars, you only have to call the names of the people who are present. Yes, no, right? Sure. Okay. And okay. just re really quick for the record, um, I joined in late, but I am present. Consuela Arguedas with the Village of Villa Park. Thank you. That said, is there any item for public comment? Yes, we have one. It is <clears throat> for today's meeting, Community Development Commission. It's from Mark Bushbacher with Serenity House Counseling Service, Inc. at 891 South Rowling Road, Addison, Illinois, 60101. The daytime phone is 630-620-66. One sec. The comment type is provide testimony, public comment. The subject is CD 20 06. I would like it to be mentioned in the topic of our grant, CD 2006 discussion, that Serenity House has invested over $20,000 in architecture and engineering to this project. It is only due to the relocation of a NICOR gas line and due to COVID, are not guaranteed from NICOR a time within the scope of our contract that would put this project in jeopardy of meeting our contractual obligation and possible forfeiture of funding. We have plans to reapply for the next contract year for the same project and are hopeful that we are granted same funding of $400,000. Thank you. End of public comment. Thank you. Next item we have is approval of minutes. CDC Community Development Commission rescheduled Tuesday, June 2nd, 2020. I would need a motion. So move. So move, Chaplain. Second, Chaplain. Thank you. Any corrections, additions, comments? Call the roll, please. Okay. Lynn LaPlante? Here. Aye. <laughs> Liz Chaplin? Aye. Here. What are we what are we voting on? Wait, we just the minutes. The approval the minutes, of the yes, minutes. Approve the minutes. I just seconded. Yes, thank you. Okay. Got thrown <laughs> off with the eye from member LaPlante. Okay. <laughs> okay. Consuelo Argas Argalis? Aye. Don Bastion? Aye. Karen Briggs? Mm. Abstain. Mm. Lori Chassie? Mm. Aye. Amy Chavez? I'm sleeping. Somebody's got a dog. Aye. Aye. Okay, thank you. Michael Crandall? Aye. John Desart? Aye. Eileen Franz? Aye. Paula Deacon Garcia? Aye. Shubra Groban? Aye. William Hennis? Aye. Tracy Jones? Aye. Joanne Kelsbrenner? Aye. Mary Ozak? Aye. Talisha Page? Same. Gosha Pacheha? Aye. Dan Popovich? Aye. Julie Renahan? Aye. Sheila Rutledge? Aye. Greg Schwarzy? Aye. Ashley Selman? Aye. Bruce Sylvester? Aye. Scott Viger? Aye. <laughs> Those stand approved. Thank you. Next, we have. Uh, item five, five A, our first action item recommendation for approval of the fiscal year 2021 slate of officers and CDC executive committee as presented. So, so moved, Chaplain. 
second or two. Any discussion? I would just say thank you to Lori for your leadership over the last year. Thank you to the municipal partners for uh, volunteering for the year ahead. Thank you. Roll call, please. Okay, Liz Chaplin. Aye. Paula Deacon Garcia. Aye. Consuelo Arguela. Aye. Don Bastian. Aye. Karen Brick. Aye. Lori Chaffee. Aye. Amy Chavez. Aye. Michael Crandall. Aye. John Desart. Aye. Eileen Fran. Aye. Shubra Bobin. Shubra. Oh, sorry, I was on mute. Aye. <laughs> William Hennep? Aye. Tracy Jones? Aye. Joanne Couchbrenner? Aye. Lynn LaPlante? Aye. Mary Ozag? Aye. Kalisha Page? Aye. Bosha Pacheja? Aye. Sam Popovich? Aye. Julie Renahan? Aye. Sheila Rutledge? Aye. Greg Schwarzy? Aye. Ashley Selman? Aye. Drew Sylvester? Aye. Scott Viger? Aye. I'm sorry, Viger. Okay, complete. Stands approved. Thank you very much. Item 5B. Recommendation for approval of cancellation of a community development block grant agreement between DuPage County and Serenity House Counseling Services, Project CD 20-06 WERC expansion with reprogramming of the $400,000 in CDBG funds. Uh, thank you, uh, Chair Jesse. It, it just uh, as a matter of procedure, it is common practice for the Community Development Commission after the slate of officers have been voted on. That the, new, that the new chair uh, continues with the meeting. Okay, thank you very much. Can I say something very quickly? I wondered about that, first of all. And secondly, um, should something unforeseen happen today, and this turn out to be my last community development meeting, I would just like to say it's been a privilege, and thank you very much. And I turn it over to capable hands. Thank you. Thank you, and that's the plus today. Thank you so much and thank you for all of your work that you put in. Thank you. I am very honored and excited to begin serving as chair of the Community Development Commission. I believe this commission will play a very impactful role in our community's recover, recovery from this global pandemic and I look forward to getting to work with all of you. With that in mind, I will entertain a motion to approve Action item, recommendation for approval of the cancellation of a community development block grant agreement between DuPage County and Serenity House Counseling Services, Project CD20-06, work expansion with reprogramming of the $400,000 in CBBG funds. So moved, Garcia. Thank you. Is there a second? Second, Chaplain. Thank you. Roll call, please. Oh, excuse me. Discussion. Just um, obviously, I heard the, uh, the the letter from uh, uh, public comment, and so just explain exactly what we're voting on. Sure. So what we're voting on is the uh, the cancellation of the existing contract um, with Serenity House. Serenity House absolutely has the right to reapply for additional funds in the future. The reason it's really important that our uh, projects continue to move forward as quickly as possible. So the uh, Congress requires uh, a, a something called the timeliness test. So our funds have to be expended in a timely manner. So when projects are delayed, it negatively impacts not just that project, but our, our entire portfolio. There is always the possibility that if we don't uh, uh, expend funds in that timely fashion and there's an actual Sort of formula that they look at, um, HUD would then we would reduce our annual appropriation. The community would lose those funds. So the idea here is that um, 
because this project is not going to make its uh, the deadlines that were established in the contract, um, we are recommending that the contract be canceled. And then, as I said, then Serenity House can come back at a later time uh, and, and reapply for those funds. We have no reason to believe that they wouldn't be eligible in the future, um, but we it's important that we put these in a pot that will um, get spent. Dave, is there anything else? That yeah, our intent is, and we'll, we'll reach out to them. Our intent is once they finish the work, we'll be able to slot them in and, and use their same application to supply them to a future a future plan. So we do it kind of in annual cycles. So if that work is completed, we'll, we'll be able to slot them into the next cycle. Thank you, Thank you very much. Any other discussion or questions? All right, again, let's have a question just to clarify. We're re reallocating those funds, correct? Yes. Yes, so we expect um, some additional work at the care center to be completed with those funds. Um, that has to be formally approved by this board at the next will come in the next agenda item in terms of the additional dollars that would go to the care center, but that's our expectation. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Roll call, please. Followed Deacon Garcia. Aye. Liz Chaplin? Aye. Consuelo Arguelas? Aye. John Bastian? Aye. Karen Brick? Aye. Lori Chassie? Aye. Amy Chavez? Aye. Michael Crandall? Aye. Dawn Desart? Aye. Lane Franz? Aye. Uh, Shubra Govin? Aye. William Hennep? Aye. Tracy Jones? Aye. Joanne Couchbrenner? Aye. Lynn LaPlante? Aye. Mary Ozai? Aye. Felicia Page? Aye. Bosha Pacheja? Aye. Sam Popovich? Aye. Julie Renahan? Aye. Sheila Rutledge? Aye. Greg Schwarzy? Aye. Ashley Selman? Aye. Bruce Sylvester? Aye. Scott Biger? Aye. That motion passes. I will entertain a motion to approve action item recommendation for approval of community development block grant, coronavirus, public service and capital improvement project recommendations, and for approval of substantial amendment five to the 2019 action plan element of the 2015 to 2019 DuPage County Consolidated Plan, which reprograms home and CDBG funds and adds CDBG TV grant funding and corresponding projects related to the coronavirus pandemic. Is so there, thank you. Is there a second? Second. Second. Or get us. Thank you. Any discussion or questions? Dave, do you want to walk us through it or do you want to go to questions? Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Dave. Um, I would. So there's a couple elements to this, and we can kind of I'll, I'll kind of go through them one by one, and then any questions you have. Um, first, regarding public service. So a big thing to keep in mind is, so it's it's COVID money, but it's CDBG, so it has to better benefit low and moderate income populations. And then we have to be able to prove that to HUD that that's who received the end benefit of that. So we received 12 applications for public service. We determined that two were ineligible because of that inability to prove for the most part. We wouldn't be able to show that those funds had been used correctly. Um, so it's not like we're saying that the Northern Illinois Supreme for example, had a bad project. It's, it's more that we're concerned that we wouldn't be able to show that the benefit was received by low and moderate income population. Um, overall, we received $1.9 million in funding requests. We're, we're uh, putting forth $1.5 million in proposed uh, applications. The other two components of this are capital. Uh, one is a little more clear cut at this point. One is for the care center. We anticipate the care center has a million dollars in, in capital needs related to COVID response. Um, the other at this point is just a category. We've talked to all emergency shelter providers in the county. We think they will all have capital needs in the next couple of years related to um, uh, facilities that mitigate COVID response. Any individual application that's gonna go forth under that three million will have to apply and we'll have to go through a public time period on its own. Uh, this allows us to put the money into a category so that it's, it's available. It's, it's, um, we're also working on HUD timeline, so we have to have money in, in the system so that HUD can allocate it to us or we'll lose it. So we're also working on that timeline. Um, but I just wanted to, at this point, that is just a category of funding. That's not a specific project. That we're in. Um, 
And then the last points on the, on the item, then we'll, we can open it for questions, are more just cleanup of our 2019 action plan. So those are smaller items that we're just kind of cleaning up, so they outstanding. I can go into more detail on any of that or have any, any questions, obviously. Member Chaplin. Member Chaplin. Thanks so much. So I have some questions regarding the um, DuPage Senior Citizens Council um, five meal pickup events. Um, <clears throat> did the Senior Citizens Council, have they worked with any other organizations to try to have these meals um, delivered uh, rather than with the Sheriff's Department? I, I know the Sheriff's Office is the only one they specified in their So I don't believe they identified any other organizations. And this $160,000, it's going directly to um, do page senior citizens council will they be paying the sheriff any of these funds um no they they um, refer to the position as meal coordinators they would be uh, for do page senior service services senior citizens council staff for those employees of dsc and um you know so these are federal funds that we're using for this project correct but community service block grants um, you know, I'm just, it's kind of a come for me to talk about this, but I'm really concerned that this event, um, this, I don't know what, you, what the sheriff's calling his, um, uh, what is it called? Um, it takes a bill, it takes a, it's a village, I mean, yeah. or village or something like that, um, initiative, you know, it, it appears that it's becoming quite political. And I am concerned about using um, federal funds with, on political events. Um, so I don't know if there's a better way to, to do this. Also, you know, having this distribution center right at the county, um, you know, for people, elderly people in Elmhurst and down in Willowbrook, um, you know, at the far sections of the county, if they're low income, I'm suggesting, and they're older, and they can't grocery shop, how are they going to get to Wheaton? Um, you know, there, I think this, this program has a lot of unanswered questions for me. I, I, and where I'm saying, I'm, I'm seeing it political, I'm seeing some Facebook posts where candidates have been at these events now, and they're sharing um, these, um, uh, these events. And, you know, um, so I think we have to be careful when we're using public or uh, federal funds and doing any kind of politicking or campaigning. And I also think, I don't know that this is the best location for a senior citizen county-wide food distribution. You know, maybe I'd like to see it go to the townships and have each township disperse the, the meals. That way you're not driving from the far corners of, you know, the southeastern section of DuPage or the northeastern section all the way across to Wheaton. Um, no good transportation way. Um, really no great public transportation to get there. So I just don't really understand how this is going to work very well. That's, those are some of my questions and concerns. I, I just want to be clear. These funds would go to the DuPage Senior Citizen Council. So it would only be paying staff and food from this, uh, incurred by the Senior Citizen Council. They are not providing any funding to any political candidates, any other elected official, any county employees, any sheriff's employees. So I want to be very clear, there is no discussion of using federal funds for, um, for uh, candidates to attend. I mean, I don't know that, that you can control who volunteers at an event, um, but I just want to be clear, there is no discussion of, of federal funding being used in any political manner. Just these funds are for a qualified nonprofit organization in Page County. And I, I also, in the uh, application, it does talk about the Ebbington Banquets parking lot. I'm not 100% clear because it says it will partner with the Sheriff's Department and Abington Banquets to host pickup meal in their parking lot. So it sounds like maybe there's two locations, one of which would be at the Abington. Okay, I have a question. Member Chaplin, are you finished? Yeah, I, I guess. Yeah, I guess I, I just, yeah, I just don't really understand. Like I said, if people are low income and they can't go grocery shopping or they, you know, I, just getting out to like these two locations too seems a little, a little bit difficult for some older people, um, low income, but I guess they can figure that out somehow. I don't know if there would be rides 
provided for people to pick up the food there. We could, uh, you know, we, we could certainly reach out to uh, Page Senior Council and request uh, additional information about that. Okay, thank a, you. I thank have you, a few Member, questions. Thank you, Member Chaplin. Member Oza? Thank you, Chairman. Okay, so I have a couple questions about this. The $160,000 is for staffing for the Senior Citizens Council and food? Correct. Okay, and my other question is, um, I have or another comment that is uh, the Abington can be a difficult location. The int the entry entering and exiting of that location is difficult because to make a left turn back onto 53, there is a light, but you have 53 traffic coming northbound, and then Butterfield is difficult that way to make a left to go westbound. It's it's a challenging um, intersection. But my other question is, in terms of the involvement of the sheriff's office, is this, um, this, the Senior Citizens Council is expecting that they can do this without any other involvement. Is that correct? I, I'm just not clear on the, the role of outside um, employees, volunteers, let's say, outside of the Senior Citizen Council. Is there liability issues? This seems, uh, it, it just seems, um, kind of uh, challenging going to a different level? Um, I, what I can tell you is that in their application, they talked about the sheriff's office providing traffic control and that their staff would conduct uh, the enrollment process and their staff would distribute the, the food. So traffic control, so they are using sheriff office resources. There will be a, a let's say an hourly charge of, of county sheriff uh, volunteer, or not volunteer, participation. And is that outlined in the grant money? So it's not an included program expense, I don't believe. But yes, I see your, yes, I see your point. So at this point, you've been told it's traffic control or is it actual distribution of the food? I, I'm just not so, clear on the whole picture sure. of this project. The application specified traffic control. Okay, thank you. Any yeah. other questions? Member. Oh, Member Renahan. There were two comments. Uh, yeah, I, I, I have to ask, it looks like based on what we're seeing on the screen, folks are popping things into the chat. I think given that this is a public meeting, if you have questions or comments, please unmute yourself and, and please do not use the chat. Okay, thank you. All right. Member Renahan. Thank you, Chairwoman LaPlante and welcome to your new position. Um, thank you so much. Um, a couple comments here. Um, first of all, I just want to thank Dave McDermott, uh, Mary Keating, Julie Hamlin, everybody. This is, you know, a, a lot of work to, to thread the needle when it comes to federal grant funds, I realize. And I, I could not be more pleased um, to see Prairie State Legal Services getting, you know, their full requested $470,000 for legal aid. We know, um, sorry, my dogs are barking now. <laughs> um, I mean, you know, uh, people facing eviction, foreclosure, need public debt benefits. So I am, I am thrilled to death on that. However, I am disappointed to see Hinsdale Community Services and Northern Illinois Food Bank, um, they missed the cut. And they did actually have numbers uh, that were higher than the UPH Senior Citizens Council, um, looking at the information provided in our packet. And I'm, I'm guessing, you said there was a question of proving, but I'm thinking that was probably included in those numbers when the rankings came out. Um, I too share the concern that there is a back end cost to the county. I mean, we can provide $160,000 in food, but you know it, it doesn't count for the fact that the sheriff is going to be providing his manpower, woman power, you know, to get these meals out. It, it, there's a, there's an extra cost there um, to it. So, yeah, I'm concerned. I'm wondering, um, you know, can, could giving DuPage or is there an alternative source here? We have all these great agencies that we work with. Um, you know, something that is a a low cost, no cost to get food out to seniors um, because we know, you know, it's, it's a basic need, it's a primary need. Um, I won't go on and on. Thank you. Can I comment? I, well, I think given that the application talks about traffic control as the role of the sheriff's department, I certainly there would not be a nonprofit or volunteer component that would be appropriate to be doing traffic control on on major streets. I guess that would be my, my, my comment on that. 
Chairman? Yes, Member Ozak. Thank you. If I can just add a comment, I brought up earlier my concerns about the site. If it was at a different site, not at the, the major intersection of 59 and, or 53 in Butterfield, then the need for traffic control would be eliminated. And um, I, I just think that's a really difficult site. I've been to many events at the Abington, Walmart, McDonald's, et cetera, and it's really difficult to get in and out of there in all directions. And Butterfield is obviously extremely busy. And 53, I believe there's a light further south on 53 south of Butterfield, but it's a lot going on there. So I'd like to consider a different location and then that would eliminate the need for traffic control, which is going to be difficult, especially depending on what time of day they choose. Um, and you've got, if you've got senior drivers, I, I just think this is a really difficult um, locational situation. Thank you. Thank you, Member Ozan. Yes, I see a hand raised. <laughs> I, I, um, I like the member chaplain's idea of coordinating with the townships. Perhaps that would be one way to limit administrative and uh, overhead if there are staff involved and more resources could go towards uh, the distribution of food. Um, if they have Meals on Wheels type of programs that may uh, already be delivering as well. So if you could partner with some formats that are already set up to do that, that might limit some administrative cost. So I, I, I did like that idea. Okay, thank you. I like that idea as well. Can I make a comment? Please. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, I, I appreciate all these comments. I just want to be clear that we as staff, uh, we don't have the ability to modify an application as, as it was submitted. So it either has to be approved or not. And that's uh, obviously, of course, it's it's your prerogative to either approve the project or not. But in terms of suggestions of locations or different ways to partner, that would be, um, the process would have to be, the project would be denied. Um, and then uh, someone would reach out to that particular agency. And this goes for any of the projects that we're discussing. Uh, we would have to reach out to the agency and say it was denied for the following reasons. The agency would then have to come back now we don't have at this time a plan for a second round of public service applications at this time. So it, again, it's certainly the prerogative of the Community Development Commission and, and the Executive Committee to, to, to direct staff to do that. Um, but I just want to be clear on what the process is. We don't have the we don't have the ability to modify the application, the project that has been put forth in this competitive process by this particular agency. Nor can we, nor can we fill in with a township office, with township program, for example. Like we can't decide that we're going to run through town. So that could be done with a separate sort of set of funds if that was the determination by by um, the county board or whoever. But we can't just take a, another idea and sort of supplant a, an application. Right. Understood. Thank you for that explanation, Member Chaplin. I see your hand again. Thanks so much. Just a couple other questions. Do you do you know how many events they're planning on doing? Because I didn't, I didn't see that in the document. It says supporting approximately three thousand seniors. Right, so, but but that that could be one day that they could do three. I mean, I, so okay, right. I saw the three thousand, and then those three thousand. So, um, do you know? So, is it one person gets one five meals, or can one person go to multiple events? Do we know that? Because I would that wasn't clear in the document either. If, so, do you know what? So, if they have like multiple events, can Joe Smith go to the three events that they're having and pick up, you know, fit, you know, go more than once, or once they go, are they checked off the list? Do you know how that works? I don't know that. Uh, Julie Hamlin, if you're on and you know that answer, please feel free to jump in, but I don't have that information. Julian? Hi, sorry, I'm looking at their application. I don't see, um, I'm looking to see if there's clarification on the number of times they will provide this service and then whether or not people can return for the service. But based on their numbers, that is unduplicated persons that they reported on for the 3000 people. Okay. 
Okay, thank you. Thanks so much. That's it. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks for my. Thanks for taking all my questions. I appreciate it. Yes, I see another hand. Yes, go ahead. Uh, it sounds like uh, there's no dispute that this is a worthwhile program. Uh, is there a way to support it and do a conditional approval? I don't know. Um, is there a possibility of a conditional approval with some guidance in it that if it was modified this way, or is that not doable? Um, I think that they explore something, you know, something like other projects where we have done conditional approval that tends to be with our housing development projects. And it's things like it's conditional upon zoning or it's conditional upon receiving funding from another entity. Um, conditions of partnering with, with a different organization or conditions of a different location, I think um, we don't know if the agency is interested in pursuing those options. That's the other, you know, that would be the other component. So without them being present, um, uh, I, it would be difficult for me to say one way or the other if they are open to, um, open to, a, you know, accepting a conditional commitment. I, I suppose we, we could do that. I think it would be very important to specify the precise conditions so that if the agency met those conditions, um, the project would then be approved. Like I said, the other, the other option would be to deny the project and then um, direct staff to uh, either open another round of applications um, or uh, simply return to that one application. But I will remind, um, just a reminder that we are working under a timeline. This action plan, uh, once it's approved here, goes on to Health and Human Services and the County Board. We then submit it to HUD for approval. Um, so uh, if, we, if we delay the, the uh, approval of the action plan, it delays all of the projects because it's all, you know, it's a sequential process. Member Ozag, I see you have a question. Thank you. Yes, I have a comment about what Mary just said about uh, perhaps amending this. I really have a problem with this location. I see it as difficult, especially for seniors, the um, in and out. I'd like to see it modified that the location is changed to, um, I, I don't know how we change, how, what, how we could modify that, but um, that would also eliminate the need for the traffic. It's not specified either in this agreement that the sheriff's office is there for traffic control. And again, I'm not an attorney. I play one on TV. Uh, however, I'm also concerned about, li re um, seriously though, I'm concerned about liability because uh, this just doesn't seem like it's something that's usually a part of a project like this. And I'm also wondering if we couldn't actually specify that they would discuss every township, I believe, has a senior citizens council or, or um, uh, function. So um, I'd like to see us modify this. I know it's not a massive amount of money, but it is important that we get this out to the community. But I just really have a problem with the Abington location. 53 in Butterfield is probably one of the busiest intersections in DuPage County. Thank you. Yes, I don't want to um, add a lot more than just reiterate that some of the concerns here are very legitimate in regards to traffic control and uh, who it's going to be serving and uh, you know who is going to be served and is it going to be numerous times or just one time um, but I think it's a definitely a valid project from what I uh, have reviewed and I'd like to reiterate also um, that due to timeliness this you know it, it is $160,000 so if this is going to not be approved uh, my question is what is a backup if we have a backup um, to replace that project because it's a significant amount of money. Um, if, if this project is not going to be using this, what is going to be the plan moving forward? That would be my job, I suppose, right? Now, um, so I would say, so if the recommendation were to deny it today, I would say the first choice would be to go back to them, have them modify theirs. We would move forward with 
all the other applications and proceed with submitting everything based on all of the other applications. And then at some point, if we were able to get to uh, an application from this agency that was amenable to the, to the board, we would modify our action plan and add it back to that would matter if you disagree with that, let me know. But that I think would be the way. Right. That that, that requires an amended amend, amendment of the action plan. Right. So it's not to say that it can't happen, but it's but remembering we approve an action plan, we submit it into the HUD system, HUD reviews it, and this is all a very long process. Then going back and amending that action plan, we we can't amend the action plan until the initial action plan has been approved. So we'd probably be talking about amending the action plan 45, 60, 90 days from now. Yeah. So it's not just a matter of, well, they'll come back in two weeks to the next board meeting. Um, uh, so that's generally how the process would work. The other, the other option would be that the project is just denied and that 160,000 then gets moved into a different category, either the care center or the, um, the, uh, the emergency shelter category. Thank you. Member Schwartzy. Thank you very much, uh, Madam Chairman. Um, so I, I, I hear everybody's concern and, and I am on board with those concerns, but a bigger concern to me is, you know, do these, do, do our senior, does our senior population need these meals now? And, you know, you, you take the politics out of it and, and let things fall where they lie. But I, I think it's important to, to get these meals out because and if I'm under, misunderstanding how this whole thing works, I don't know, but um, I, I think we need to, you know, I'm not starving, but we don't know who is. Let's get these meals out as quickly as we can. Yeah. Thank you so much. Member Renahan. Thank you. I don't, I don't want to belabor the point, but it, again, just going back to scoring, this did score dead last, um, and we had two other food uh insecurity places that we're addressing, one at 49.5, 40, one at 54, Northern Illinois Food Bank that seemed very worthy candidates. And I have to question a little bit the, the ability of this committee to make a decision. If, if we turn it back, we're not gonna have time. I mean, that just doesn't fly for me. I mean, then we should be, have had this meeting a month ago. I mean, you know, if we're here to actually make decisions and, and to, give, to give, you know, feedback, then let's make that legitimate. I'm not saying that we that that we don't have time. I'm saying that it, it will just delay the process di differently than just the two weeks. Um, in terms of the Northern Illinois Food Bank, I want to be clear: the reason the Northern Illinois Food Bank was denied is that the Northern we, as a recipient of community development block grant funds, the agency has to provide income information for the individuals who are receiving the food. So even though it's completely counterintuitive to say, well, they can't prove it's low income people going to the to the uh, to the food pantries, so ultimately that's how that's unfortunately how it works. So the, the Northern Illinois Food Bank does not have income information on the individuals who receive the food. And for that reason, it's not eligible uh, as a CDBG public service project. I guess my question is, wouldn't that be reflected in the scores? So wouldn't they be docked for not hitting that nut, so to speak. Well, so the score is a, based on all the different application components that they completed, but then we also do an eligibility review. So it is a little bit different. We look to see the, determine first and foremost that the project is eligible. Looks like Julie may want to jump in as well. Yeah, I just wanted to clarify that the scoring is based on the scoring criteria built into the application, but the minimum requirements aren't scored because if they don't meet a minimum requirement, the application is automatically ineligible, but we still go through all of the application questions just to be fair to the agency and to give it an overall score. Okay. Member Chaplin. Thanks so much. I just, and I just wanna make sure um, that um, what I said earlier was clear. When I mentioned the being political, when you use federal funds, um, you can, federal funding can be in jeopardy if there is any type of political um, activity done with federal funds. So I just wanted to make sure that this was, you know, that we were safe from that. So as long as Mary assured me that none of this money, 160 is going to the sheriff, then I think we're gonna be okay. But um, I just didn't wanna be, you know, have this 
project or those funds or any or the sheriff lose any federal funding or anybody else lose any federal funding. So that's why I brought that up. But Mayor, you know, we now know that that's all going to the Senior Citizens Council and none of it's going to um, the sheriff. So that clears that aspect up. Wonderful. Thank you. Member Ozai. Uh, does the Hinsdale facility meet all of the criteria for low income? They do not. They, they, yeah. they do not. Sorry. They do not collect income documentation to be able okay. to represent the population. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Seeing any more questions or comments? Then I do yeah. have one. Okay. Just really quick. Uh, this is. Is it me? Yes. Go ahead. Yes. Just really quick. Um. Just my initial thoughts on this, because having had experience in managing uh, CDBG funding programs previously in my prior position, um, I'm reviewing these as applications are coming in and they qualify. And my personal thought on this is that there might be some follow-up items that we might have to uh, revisit next time, should they apply next time, but I'm in support of it. It qualifies uh, as a low-income project. Uh, in hopes that we get this approved and the timeliness is not going to be an issue and we'll move forward with providing funding to those that need it. Thank you so much. That looks like it is. Okay, no more discussion or questions? Roll call. I have, I have a question on the issue before us. Is it, are we voting as a whole on all of the applications that are presented before us or is there an opportunity or an option to set aside one particular candidate? for lack of a better word. The current motion on the table is to approve the action plan as submitted. There would need to be a, a motion to uh, amend or modify the action plan uh, if, there was a, if there was a desire to remove a project. It would, but the, the current motion on the table is to approve the action plan as presented. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Seeing no more or hearing no more questions or comments, a roll call, please. Okay. Rich Worthy. Aye. Consuelo Arguello. Aye. John Bastian. Aye. Karen Briggs. Aye. Liz Chaplin. Aye. Lori Chassie. Aye. Amy Chavez. Aye. Michael Crandall. Aye. John Desar. Aye. Eileen Franz. Aye. Paula Deacon Garcia. Aye. Kubra Govan. Aye. William Hennis. Aye. Tracy Jones. Aye. Joanne Kelsbrenner. Aye. Lynn LaPlante. Aye. Mary Ozag. Aye. Alicia Page. Aye. Gosha Pacheja. Aye. Sam Popovich. Aye. Julie Renahan. Aye. Sheila Rutledge. Aye. Ashley Selman. Aye. Bruce Sylvester. Bruce Sylvester. Oh, he's gone. Okay. Uh, Scott Bay. Okay. Okay. The motion passes. I will entertain a motion to approve action item recommendation for approval of release of DuPage County deed restrictions with DuPage Community Housing and Advocacy and Development Community Housing Association of DuPage on twenty-seven properties. Is there a motion? So moved Garcia. Thank you. Is there a second? Second, Arguelles. Thank you. Any discussion or questions? Would you like? Oh, uh, sorry, Dave. This is from the Wayback Machine. Um, this, uh, these were initially put on these properties in the 80s. Chad was a new organization. Our understanding, as best as we can put together, is that the county was trying to make sure that Chad is a new organization, that there was some backing and support. Um, all of the properties in question have now been maintained as affordable housing for over 30 years. Our normal maximum requirement is 20 years, so they've surpassed what we would normally do for a new project, let's say. 
Um, we did consult with the state's attorney prior to um, bringing this recommendation forward. They thought that since the initial um, limitation was placed on by the county board, that it should go all the way through the county board and get approved. So this is the first step towards that, but um, we don't have any concerns in terms of our staff about releasing these documents. Okay, wonderful. Any questions? Seeing none and hearing none, uh, roll call, please. Allison Garcia? Aye. Consuelo Arguello? Aye. John Bastian? Aye. Karen Briggs? Aye. Liz Chaplin? Aye. Lori Chassie? Aye. Amy Chavez? Aye. Michael Crandall? Aye. John Desart? Aye. Any friends? Aye. Shubra Robin? Aye. William Hennep? Aye. Tracy Jones? Aye. William Kelsbrenner? Aye. In the plan? Aye. Mary Ozai? Aye. Lisa Page? Aye. Gosha Pacheja? Aye. Dan Popovich? Aye. Julie Renahan? Aye. Sheila Rutledge? Aye. Greg Schwarzy? Aye. Ashley Selman? Aye. Scott Viger? Aye. That motion passes. Next, we have the informational 2020 year in review. I turn it over to David McDermott. Thank you, David. Go ahead. I know we are over time, so I will be pretty brief and just try to hit the highlights on this. Because this is our annual meeting when everyone's here and all the municipalities are here and all the board members are here, we try to provide just an update. Um, First and foremost, I just want to thank my staff who worked very, very hard to get managed these different pots of money, which are very complicated and have lots of regulation layers, as you can see. So they've done an incredible job over the last year, and I want to thank them for doing all of this work because you know I, I write the reports. They are actually the ones working the project, and thank you for getting it done. Um, we always talk about really three pools of money with this. We talk about CDBG, which is primarily used for neighborhood infrastructure projects or for public service, public um, improvements to nonprofit buildings. For public services. Um, so I highlighted some examples of the projects that we've completed in the last year in that category. Um, the other one is home affordable housing projects. We have two major projects that take years to develop and have involved millions of dollars, both of which should end in the next six to 12 months. Um, one is a large senior housing complex in Warrenville, and the other is improvements. And uh, well, it has a new construction and a rehab element in Naperville for senior housing. So those are projects that, again, take years to develop. Um, we will also be in those properties for years. So we'll be maintaining or ensuring that that stays as affordable housing for um, 30 years, I believe, on one and at least 20 on the other. Um, so those are those are projects that are certainly worth highlighting. They were um, major endeavors. And then uh, anytime we talk about ESG, that's always uh, related to homeless services. So service providers for individuals experiencing homelessness or uh, infrastructure that supports individuals who are experiencing homelessness or recycling in and out. Um, and so I, um, I, I did, I include some pictures in there. I include some examples of some projects that have gone well over the last year in each of those categories. And then we are still dealing with um, disaster recovery money, which was from a flood event in 2013. So we are happily on our very last project of that. Um, it will be uh, at the Elmhurst Quarry. And I talked a little bit about that. It'll be flood controls at the Elmhurst Quarry. Um, it's, that's a project in that whole, that was $31 million. It was a major endeavor. Uh, we still have to close it out. We're not out of the book, out of the weeds yet. We still have to actually close it out and get it all done, but we are at least initiating our final project for that. And so that is uh, certainly good news to share. Um, the other, uh, in this, in this, you know, ho hop, nothing major year. The other thing I wanted to, to note is that we, of course, uh, we talked about this earlier with the item. We have about $10 million in new money that came from COVID. We expect more to come. There's talk of more money coming for home. There's talk of potentially more money in the uh, infrastructure bill if that gets passed. So there's, there's, uh, uh, I just wanted to make sure that that was a, certainly a, a big challenge over the last year and something our staff have all uh, have dealt with very well. And then I had two, um, two minor programmatic updates. One I wanted to highlight for our municipal partners, but one just for the good of the the group. So our our program has historically funded a home home buyer program for probably 20 to 25 years. Part participation in that has really dropped over the last five years. We've had zero participants in the last year. So we and we think there's market forces at play. There's uh, deals that the banks are offering that are better than what we offer. Um, 
HUD regulations are pretty strict in terms of what we have to go through to approve someone. We've had people that fall out of the process because they can't pass all of the underwriting standards that HUD puts in place. So with, with the partner agency, with Home to Cage, we mutually decided that this was time to end this agreement. So um, this is just to say for the, the order that, that there will not be a home buyer program in the immediate future. If situations change, we may open it up again or we may look at, at trying to start that up again. But right now it doesn't seem like there's a, a demand for it. And then the other item that I wanted to note, especially for our municipal partners. So we anticipate this summer going out and requesting applications uh, for municipal projects. So um, we get a lot of streets and roads, but it can be parks, it can be green infrastructure, it can be bike lanes. There's a lot of different things that you can do under the CDBG umbrella. Um, we also get a lot of the same partners, which is great. We get a lot of Edison, we get a lot of West Chicago, we get a lot of Bensonville. Certainly would welcome applications from that, but there are a lot of communities that have low income areas. So you have to have an area um, that is has an adequate low income, lower moderate income population to qualify for this funding. So this is just a reminder to say that a lot of your municipalities have census tracts that are eligible for these kind of projects. So please take an opportunity. We can also our staff can help you if you have any questions or you want to identify an area, you want to talk to us about what a project might look like. We're absolutely encouraged to reach out to us and talk through that. Um, in, in many ways, the, the funding that we get is a combination of all of your populations. And so we like to give the money back to, to the populations when we can. Um, and then uh, the other thing, un unincorporated area areas can also be eligible. So I've had some questions about that in the past too, but an unincorporated area can be eligible. You have to find an agency to apply uh, on behalf of that unincorporated area. So um, we expect that this summer, that would be applications that would be potentially funded over the next three years. So. Um, look for that, especially for the municipal partners who maybe aren't on the every monthly call, but are on this call. It's something to, to make a note of. I think that's it. I think I'm trying to keep it short and sweet for work. That's all right. Thank you so much. Mary, do you have anything to add? Um, I just want to thank uh, the entire community development staff uh, for the incredible work this year. I want to thank Dave for the incredible work in his first year with the county. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, baptism by fire. So <laughs> thank you all. Um, you know, the, the, as Dave said, these funds are incredibly complex. Um, it's a huge amount of work to, to get these projects off the ground. Um, I think the two uh, large home projects are, you know, a significant accomplishment. We're talking, I think, over 200 units of senior housing that will be put into service um, this year. So that's, uh, that's really exciting. And um, so thank you all uh, for, for the work. And then just a reminder that when we adjourn, those of you who are on the executive committee need to stay for a couple more minutes for the home advisory group, please. Okay, thank you. Is there any other business? Seeing none and hearing none. Um, um, oh. Chairwoman LaPlante. Yes, yes, Member Salvin. All right, just very, very briefly, just to sort of echo on Dave's comments about this very uneventful year we've all had. Um, I just wanted to pass along, I had a very kind thank you from a constituent this weekend that you all had helped them navigate how to get some services for their aged mother and they happen to qualify too. And so you helped them get some vaccines and some home care things. Um, I just wanted to pass along how, you know, you guys have, you, we all know the big programs you've helped with, with emergency housing, but the ways that you're helping individual families don't always get highlighted. So I just wanted to pass along that thanks. And I look forward to all the innovative things we'll be considering as we look at some new federal funding, hopefully in the next few months. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Well deserved and such important work that everyone is doing and is so happy to be a part of this. Um, can I get a motion to adjourn? So moved. So moved. Can I have a second? Second. Okay, roll call please. Oh, okay, sorry. Who seconded? Any hand? Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, Paula Deacon Garcia? Aye. Sue Renahan? Aye. Consuela Aguilas? Aye. John Bastion? Aye. Karen Bricks? Aye. Liz Chaplin? Aye. Lori Chassie? Aye. Amy Chavez? Aye. Michael Crandall? Aye. Don Dessart? Aye. Lane Franz? Aye. Subra Govin? Aye. William Hennis? Aye. Tracy Jones? Aye. Tracy? 
John? Aye. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Joy Couchbrenner? Aye. Lynn LaPlante? Aye. Mary Ozak? Aye. Okay, Felicia Page? Aye. Felicia Proteja? Aye. Sam Popovich? Aye. Sheila Rutledge? Okay. Uh, Greg Schwarzy? Aye. Ashley Selman? Aye. And Scott Biger? Aye. Wonderful. Our next meeting date is April 5th, 2022. See you all then. Thank you, everyone. This meeting is adjourned. Let's hope for an actually boring year next year. Thank you. Good job. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, bye, everybody. Yes. Moving to the Home Advisory Committee. A call to order. Um, can we have a roll call? Consuelo Aguilas? Present. John Bastian? Here. Ruth Broder? Here. Amy Chavez? Here. Lori Chassie? Here. Mm. Lori Chassie? I'm here. Okay. <laughs> Max Randall? Here. Paula Garcia? Here. William Hennig? Here. Lynn LaPlante? Here. Donald Pachowski? Julie Renahan? Here. Ted Biger? Here. James A. Okay. Okay. Um, are there any public comments? Public comments? Seeing none and hearing none, um, I move for a, a, make a motion for approval of minutes. So moved, Garcia. Thank you. Do I have a second? Second, second. Hannah. Thank you. Roll call, please. Okay. Paula Garcia? Aye. William Hennig? Aye. Consuelo Aguilas? Aye. John Bastian? Aye. Ruth Broder? Ruth Broder? You're, mute. You're muted. Aye. Here we go. Amy Chavez? Aye. Lori Chassie? Aye. Michael Prando? Aye. Lynn LaPlante? Aye. Julie Renahan? Aye. Scott Biger? I will Okay. Um, I will entertain a motion to approve action item, recommendation for approval of a second modification to a home investment partnership program memorandum of understanding between the DuPage County Department of Community Services and the County of DuPage project number HM19-07, tenant-based rental assistance, reducing the agreement to $338,590. This is a COVID item. So moved, Chassie. Thank you, do I have a second? Okay. Second, Nargelis. Thank you. Roll call, any questions or discussion? Uh, just quickly on this, it's in a it's an MOU with the county internally, basically, so it's between our department and another agency within the county. We put as much money as we could there initially, and then with all of the other rental assistance funds that are going on, and all of the new rental assistance money that's been going on, we projected that this is where we think we're going to be advanced. We felt like it was more appropriate to move the money now and put it into a project that we think is going to go forward. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Dave. Um, roll call, please. Lori Chassie? Aye. Consuelo Aguilas? Aye. John Bastian? Aye. Bruce Broder? Aye. Amy Chavez? Aye. Michael Crandall? Aye. Paula Garcia? Aye. William Hennep? Aye. Lynn LaPlante? Aye. Julie Renahan? Aye. Scott Biger? Aye. That motion passes. I will entertain a motion to approve action item recommendation for approval of community development block grant coronavirus public service and capital improvement project recommendations and for approval of substantial amendment five to the 2019 action plan element of the 2015 to 2019 DuPage County consolidated plan, which reprograms home and CDBG funds and adds CDBG COVID grant funding and corresponding projects related to the coronavirus pandemic. This is also a COVID item. 
So moved, Garcia. Thank you. Do I have a second? Second, Chavez. Thank you. Roll call, please. Paul Garcia? Aye. Amy Chavez? Aye. Ms. Willa Aguilas? Aye. John Bastion? Aye. Ruth Broder? Aye. Lori Chassie? Aye. Michael Crandall? Aye. William Hennett? Aye. William McLean? Aye. Julie Renahan? Aye. Fred Biger? Aye. That motion passes. Moving on to other business, does anyone have any other business? Uh, the only thing I would note on that is just that it's so sometimes we have this happen where it's the same item as we approved at the last meeting. So if that looks exactly the same, that's why just for some of the newer members. So Thank if you. there's home funds involved, then it has to go through both committees if it's only CDBG funds. But so that's that's why it looks exactly the same. Okay. Thank you for that clarification. Any other questions or comments? Seeing none and hearing none, I move to adjourn. Oh, so move. Thank you. A second, please. Second, Crandall. Thank you. Roll call, please. Paul Garcia? Aye. Michael Crandall? Aye. Michael Edwards? Aye. John Bastion? Aye. Louis Broder? Aye. Amy Chavez? Aye. Uh, Lori Chassie? Aye. William Hennett? Aye. Lynn McClan? Aye. Julie Renahan? Uh, oh, okay. Uh, Aye. Okay. Wonderful. The next meeting is May 4th, 2021. This meeting is adjourned. Thank you so much, everyone. Hopefully, I'm going to be optimistic and say I'll see you all next month. Yeah, good, <laughs> luck. Good, luck. good luck. Thank you.